you know you've got some mental problems when you're like, oh, it's just the bookcase bleeding, that's all. Dreams. Modern psychology offers only unproven theories. Some see them as the meaningless tossing and turning of a brain settling into a restful sleep. Others see them as laden with symbols of our unconscious desires. To still others, dreams represent the upwelling of the archetypes, normally hidden deep within the recesses of the human collective unconscious. Of one thing I am certain. After a brush with the ancients, our dreams metamorphosize into nightmares. I have implored you for years, yet you ignore all my advances. You dominate my dreams, and I can think of nothing else. I fear I desire you many hundred times more than you love me. My life has become a waking dream, Karim. For weeks, I have dreamed of an ancient treasure so precious that it changes all life around it. It must be mine, Karim. If you truly desire me, as you say, then you will find this for me. Bring this treasure to me, and I will be yours. Both of our dreams will come true. I need nothing more than you. You have enthralled me to the point where I can think of nothing else. Promise, if I leave, you will not forget about me. You need not worry. I desire nothing more than the treasure that you seek. Leave now, Kareem, and I shall await you. Welcome to the Gift of Forever. Alright, let's take a look around, see what we can see. I can see this guy. The man's corpse lies fallen. Wounds cover the exposed flesh of his body where his armor has failed. Ah, sorry to hear that, fella. And we try to leave it, of course. We're back here. Which, because it's our second time, I can now show you. You come in here and look at a statue you've already seen. Like, yep, here's Elia. We've already seen it. You know, seen it before. Here's Pius. We've seen it before. But if there's a new player on the board, like, say, Anthony, you get the full cutscene again. Anthony! Yeah, sorry, man. Alright, let's get the book and get the hell out of here. And, of course, now he sees what happened, you know, in chapters 1 through 3, which, you know, makes... Wow, that dude is big. Look at this guy. He's huge. Like... The zombie right here is about the same size as Kareem, who's presumably just a normal-sized dude. This guy is gigantic. Uh, anyways, I was saying something. Yes. What I was saying... The size that this guy was huge. Uh, I guess what I was saying is we should read our inventory and, uh, go over the finishing move first. I'm still thinking about it. Okay, finishing move. All right, real whack that body up. Okay. Yeah, I got a nice good view of that. There we go. Uh, that's the finishing move of the Tulwar. The Tulwar is a curved blade with a heavy chopping edge. Most Tulwars had a circular hilt and pommel, making them easy to recognize. We also have chakrams. The chakram was a favorite throwing weapon through Central Asia and medieval times. A balanced ring of metal, sometimes beautifully decorated, it would be hurled at an attacker. Heavy chakrams could sever limbs or heads, however, they were not designed to return to the thrower. Sorry, fans of Xena Warrior Princess. And finally, Talisman. An ancient talisman that's been in Kareem's family for many generations, it's said to bestow long life on those that have kept it. This item can be used to restore health. And, you know, we can see that it's a, a Chaturga spell, a three-point spell, and it told us it was health, so we know that it will be, like, the basic three-point, 
you know, uh, health healing spell as opposed to like magic or sanity healing. Okay. There we go. Now, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yes. So I was uh, talking about the, the, the tome uh, and how it's actually kind of interesting if you think about it. So it, at first glance, you're like, well, yeah, everything makes sense. Like you're chapter four and Kareem just saw what happened in chapters one, two and three. But it gets a little weirder if you actually stop to think about it because it's not happening chronologically. Like, this is the order that Alex is finding the pages and reading them. But, you know, Kareem's chapter just now said it started, you know, 565 AD. Elia's wasn't uh, until, like, something like 1150 or 1140, something like that. Like, so Elia's stuff is not happening for another 500 years. And yet Kareem's already read about it like it's previously happened, you know, so I, was, I could have mentioned that during Anthony's, because Anthony's like 800-something, right? 700. Uh, and so it's the same case, I was just too distracted to think about other stuff, but... So, you know, it, it doesn't really make sense chronologically, but of course you're talking about ancient horrors outside of space and time, so it doesn't need to. Like, they don't operate within the same realms of physics that we do, so, like, sure, it might not be happening chronologically, but they can still read about what's happening in the future. Although it does make you wonder then, like, why can't they read about, like, say, Alex? Like, why are, is Alex's chapter not being shown? Um, I mean, there's actually some reasons for that, but we'll we'll ignore the, the spoiler stuff for now, and I won't tell you why. An arcane shrine dominates the room. Braziers surround its edge, while a larger one tops its summit. No doubt each one would be filled with incense to facilitate prayer to insidious deities. Oh, if only you knew. Uh, we've got these three uh, pedestals here. We look at the statuette we picked up, a crudely sculpted statue out of a man. It seems particularly heavy for its size, so I go, like, okay, well, I can put one there and I can stand here, but that's not three. Well, there's this thing on. We did just find a rune. Let's take a look. Why, look at that. The symbols match. So if you just go over to it with the rune in hand. Bop. Oh, speaking of runes, I guess, while I'm at it, uh, you know, I, I showed you spell crafting in Anthony's chapter, but we only had three the three runes, so of course it was going to work. So if you're like, okay, oh, we just found this new thing. We don't know what it is, but let's try crafting it with, say, Magramore item. And it just goes, nah. Well, okay, but what if we craft it with Entrebok? Meh. So that's what it looks like if you try crafting a spell and it doesn't work, so that's how you know it's like, if it's not like, you discovered spell one, then, then you know that you gotta, gotta keep looking before that one works. I'll tell you that. Thank you. Uh, what's, I guess, also interesting now, you get to uh, see for the first time, because of the first repeat we've had, uh, what it looks like when you go back to a place later on. Like, uh, what I'm trying to say, like, chronologically, this time it is chronologically, you know, Pius was here in, what, like, 40 BC or whatever, you know, it was double-digit BC. Now Kareem's here in 500 and so, yes, it's the same location. We're in the, the, the Persian area, which I don't think has been named yet, so I won't tell you what it is. Um, but, you know, this is this is a lot more involved and complicated than when, you know, Pius was here. Because, you know, five centuries have passed. So, and we just got another codex, so here's what it looks like. I mean, you know, not surprising. You know, if you find a rune, but you don't have the, the codex for it, it's like, oh, here's the rune, but I don't know what it is. I don't know what it does. If you find the codec to be like, this is Ulioth, but we don't have it, so we just have the tablet telling us for now. So, yeah. That's cool. We also have a statuette now. We can use that. And step on that. Mm, yeah, so... Here, we didn't have one as Anthony. I was going to say, it's our first ranged weapon. No, that's not true. Elia had a, a blow dart, but she didn't have trappers to worry about. So if you don't want to be taken by a trapper, you can always target them with a ranged attack, and then... Look, there it goes. Look, there it goes. Now, I don't really want to waste my chakrams necessarily on them. Because, yeah, no. I don't need to. I'm wondering, can I actually outrun... Yes, you can. I'd forgotten if you could actually outrun a trapper explosion. It's not easy. In fact, let's, let's go top up on something. But, <laughs> oh, hello. Uh, I see there's a, a Chaturga horror. But 
I had forgotten about this. It's standing on the portal. We're just gonna wait for. Ooh, you nearly had me. Color change. Come on, give me red. Give me red. There we go. <laughs> Teleport him to chunks. Meanwhile, this guy's like, "Hey, you can't just do that to a horror and beat him that quickly." I'm like, "I sure can." Ugh. Get out. Yeah, this, they take so many hits, and, you know, that's why why Red is considered the hardest, because the zombies just take forever to kill. Zoop. Speeding up more Red zombies that are take forever to kill. Eh. Eh. Oh. Oh. Uh... Yeah, I should probably get my sanity back. Again, I don't need full, but I don't want to be caught with no sanity. Especially, this song is really cool in this level. The, the soundtrack for it. I really don't want it to just be doing the, like, bah, shah, 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 blah, 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 in the background the whole time. Cause that's no fun. I like the music. I mean, yeah, sanity effects are also fun, but... Alright. No trappers. Let's go down. The shrine is risen from the floor, exposing what appears to be a lifting mechanism. Should Kareem use the device to descend? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, there's that famous Persian poppin' brazier you've heard so much about from Pius. Hmm. I can look at this dead body, but I can't actually do any. I have the suspicion that... That guy might not stay on the ground. Don't don't tell me why. I just have a thought here. Why in a pool of cold blood is a dead soldier? He's the victim of an unseen battle. Perhaps this man died from the claws of the monsters of this place. It's difficult to tell. But what I do see... Fancy... Yeah, a man lies dead, anointed in blood from the ravages of a tulwar sword. The wounds, deep and numerous, seep fresh blood. Precise yet powerful, the result of a man's actions, not a monster's. Should I retrieve it? Yes, please. I acquired another one. I can dual wield. So yeah, if you if you target, of course, you're just gonna still do a single chop because you're targeting a single thing. But if you're not targeting, you get this cool little scissor slice combo, like scissor uppercut thing. Yeah. Oh, I know that sound. I am not happy with you. I mean, most people aren't happy with, you know, a dead zombie guy rising up, but... Yeah, like, if I target, it's still just... Uh, yeah, that would be a bone thief. We saw them at the end of Anthony's chapter. They are real, real annoying. So, is that other guy a bone thief? Probably. You're going to investigate him? Hi. Can I just stab you just to be sure? No. Um, yeah, bone thieves pilot people. They uh, burrow their way into their victims, pilot them around, and then when you kill them, they uh, jump out and uh, drain more sanity, and they're really annoying to kill, especially... Uh... Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. Bone thieves don't have to be in living people. They can be in zombies, too. It's like, look at that. I just have no sanity because I got the drain hit of sanity from the zombie, then the drain of sanity from the bone thief. So yeah, they're, they, they suck. Give me my music back. Another dead man. Who were these men whose corpses littered the dungeon? Unwary soldiers who stumbled inside? Grave robbers looking to plunder it? Crumpled scroll lies under the dead man's curled fingers. Recover. Uh, and this spell is one of the reasons... Well, interestingly, a couple things. So we learned the... Oh, here's actually what the recover spell looks like. You know, just like we found, you know, a, a codex for the rune, but we don't have it yet. It looks like this. If you find a spell, but you don't have it, you know, you can check it. A tattered scroll from an ancient text reads, The spell enables the transfer of magical power from the environment to the self. Restoration of the body, spirit, and mind is the spell's purpose. 
The spell requires narrow calf and Sontok, but we don't know what those are. So it's not telling us, you know, like this one is, where it's the top right and bottom left, being like, these are the two runes you need. Since we don't know what runes those are, it's still just, you know, blank circles. Now, we can potentially do it if we find those runes. You know, presumably this is going to be one of them. Yeah. Oh, the other thing that's interesting, the Recover. Uh, one of the reasons why um, Ulioth is sort of considered the middle is because of the order, like, you get stuff. Like, yeah, exploding zombies are, you know, no fun and all, but because the first, you know, uh, alignment you get is Chaturga. So now that we're on Kareem's level, once we get the heal, like, you know, healing spell, we can heal health. So yeah, that, you know, and so that's the sort of one reason why blue is considered, like, the medium. It's not, like, harder, because you can keep your health topped up, but you can't keep your sanity topped up. You know. So there you go. <laughs> also, by the by, Recover with blue is basically worthless because it it takes the amount of magic you put in. Uh, so we can open this door or go in here. Metallic plaque replaces the lock. A colored sigil is engraved in the middle above a wide slot. The slot appears to be wide enough to insert a large blade. Well, let's not even try because we know that we need to enchant our blade. We can't yet, so... Please, no Bone Thief, because that would hurt right now with no sanity. Thank you. Thank you. Right. We're good now. So, yeah, if you recall, this room, we've been here before. I think this is the same one. This is the same, because this is also the same area that Pius was in. He came in from this door. Now, at the time, this door didn't exist. So he came in here, we fought zombies, and we came in here, and then the camera was flipped the other direction, so we were looking at it, you know, Pius was like this, and we could see his face, and this is where we picked up uh, one of the blocks, and, you know, this door did not exist at the time. Oh, there's a horror. Hello, horror. Gotta run, I gotta run. Ow. Ow. Come on. I can out-brute force him. I've got double two bars. It's, it's gonna hurt, but I can do it. Whew. Yeah, so you see, not, you know, again, not as hard as it will be, but not quite as hard as, say, Anthony, who had his, uh, you know, hand and a half bastard sort of could just run up and one shot the you know, whop and get a horror head off. Like we had to actually get up in his grill and start fighting him, and our health sort of suffered for it. We'll just heal up a little bit right there. Stone tablet, a magical codex, and what did we learn? We learned that this one, Santac, means self. Speaking of new runes, we've got self, and we have this new thing. Look at that. We discussed, so here's, you know, you can, like, we knew a spell existed, and we knew that we had this new rune, so we can try it. Now, interestingly, uh, check, that's what I wanted to do. It still only shows the, uh, you know, the, the Sontak rune, because we don't have Narrowcoth yet. And so it's like, well, I don't know what's on that one. So we still do have to find the Codex right here before it'll fill in our spell codice. But now, more importantly, uh, let's assign a three-point healing spell to that button. Like, yeah, I, I could assign item buffs, but I don't really care. I don't use them that much. But now I can do this on command. Oh, baby, that is going to make things lots easier to actually do fights and stuff. Which also uh, is why you have a healing talisman, because depending on which ancient you picked, you won't necessarily have uh, Chaturga by now, because if you picked, um, uh, if you pick Zelatoth, you remember my rune list. You know, as I said, you always get the one that's weak to you first, the same one second, and the one that's strong third. And since red is strong against green, Chaturga's the last one you get on a Zelatoth route. 
but that means you don't have a healing item or like a way to heal in this chapter. So they give you this, uh, you know, talisman because if you pick Zelototh, you'd have no heal. Thankfully, we do have Zelototh and we can heal. All right, down the next ladder. Oh, I was wondering why it wouldn't actually let me down the thing, because we had a sanity effect. We never went in that room yet. So yeah, sometimes the sanity effects, you know, you have blood dripping from the oh hi walls. You've got, uh, you know, Elia turned herself into a, or, you know, saw herself as a zombie. But sometimes the sanity effects are just, are simply benign like that, where you're like, I want to climb down and it doesn't let you. And you're like, I want to climb down and it doesn't let you. And then you try and climb down again and then you just pop up because you just never came in this room, as dull as that was. So I love it. Oh, so good. My dear Alex, I will always be at your side. There are times when insanity takes hold and nothing seems right. During those times, I will help you. Fear not, for I will keep the darkness away. Uh, Alex is like, uh, this isn't really happening. So interest. Okay. I guess I somewhat amend my statement because it's true. Like when, when, uh, Kareem picked up the Tome of Eternal Darkness, he didn't read about, you know, other, you know, chapters, you know, five. He didn't read about Alex's current day stuff. But at the same time, he just saw that because he just said, this isn't happening. So, you know, Alex was reading has the ghost of her grandpa talk to her, and then Kareem's like, what is going on? No, that's not happening. I'm here right now. So, okay, that's kind of cool then that, like, they don't, you know, see, like, Alex's stuff, but at the same time, like, you know, he saw what Alex just experienced. Anyways, we got our spell, and so, yes, Narokoth, which means... Now the recover spell is fully, you know, put in. The age ceiling has collapsed, creating an impassable pile of rubble that blocks the doorway. If, you know, again, if you recall, as I said, because that was where Pius was earlier, this would be where Pius picked up the Ulioth artifact. So this is going to be that big room where he put the blocks in. Hello, big room. Well, I'm sure nothing bad will happen but this. Just a giant sword in the center of the room? It'll be fine. Uh, yeah, so that's, it's just, you know, interesting the way that, you know, that the places you visit in the future, you know, from Pius now to Kareem, some of it's different, but some of it is the same. So, like, you're still going to places that Pius went some of the time. But, you know, there's also new things that weren't there when Pius was there or that Pius didn't care about. All right, a large Ram Tao broadsword protrudes from a solid pedestal made of stone. It awaits its next owner. Should Kareem try to pull the sword from the stone? Will I become the next king? No. No, you can't. We're just gonna fight a lot of zombies. But hey, while we're at it, this is a Ram Tao broadsword, typified by its long, broad blade and heavy cutting edge. A formidable weapon enables its users to strike at many enemies at once and still keep distance. With a sweep, Kareem can knock down enemies and can cause extreme damage with an overhead attack. So yeah. Womp. Just massive swing. Yeah, we, we actually need to kill... I thought a sanity effect was happening. No, it's just my game was freezing, I think, because there was so much going on. Okay, I do need to get more sanity, though, because otherwise they're going to start draining my health whenever they drain sanity. And just like uh, Anthony's bastard sword, you can just cleave them in two. Maybe that sanity is small as it is. I'm not sure why you have to do a finishing move on those guys. Like, 
there's nothing left but a pair of legs. Are you sure this is... Dawn. Dawn. I'm missing because I'm not targeting properly. Yeah, there we go. We're taking help now. Um, that's actually one of the reasons why I picked Uliath is specifically so we would not have the Sanity Restoration spell until the last one. Because, you know, it makes it more fun. You get to see more Sanity effects. It's also more fun just because, you know, besides more Sanity effects, then you sort of have to play strategically. That you can't just say, be like, oh, you know, I want to see Sanity things, so I'm going to have no Sanity. But then, like, oh, well, we're now we're in a fight where we need it, so let's just, you know, heal it up with a healing spell. You know, this way, I actually have to, you know, try gameplay-wise, so it makes it a little more interesting to play. Like, obviously, if you're keeping topped up on Sanity, it doesn't really matter, but if you're purposely not staying high Sanity... Who's next? There's our Uliath rune. The one, the only... The antagonist this particular time. No. Nope. Let's see. Ah, oh, there was a bone thief. Yeah. Just look how much they're draining from me. Ow, oh, no, no, no. Get off. I hate you and all you stand for. Why can I not target? Target? Why am I not hitting? Uh. Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. Let's, uh... Heal up a bit. <sighs> Much better. All right, let's blow this popsicle stand. We have a large sword that can fit inside a uh, a thingamajig. Thought I, I, I guess that was Kareem. I thought he was like, wait. I guess he was just sort of mumbling to himself. Wait, I have to say. All right, that's fine, man. That's fine. Double checking, you still dead, you're still dead, all right. Uh, now we need a spell, enchant item. Oh, and now that we have two uh, uh, alignment runes, I mean, obviously, you know, it's not surprise, you go like this, but that's, you know, you pick a thing and then you can choose, do you want to use red, do you want to use blue? We're gonna use blue. Actually, that one you can hear even better when I was trying to show off the like how you hear the words as they are cast. Um, Uliath, it's a little bit easier to hear what he's saying because uh, yeah, it's, you know, Adrabok and Magrimor and Uliath because that's him. So if you listen to it, Magrimor, Uliath, it's just neat. I I just I like that it's not. You know, there's, uh, I guess the TV trope for it would be called, um, you know, it's gameplay and story integration. Like, the same things you see in cutscenes, all that stuff, the same things that the bad guys are casting, it's exactly the same how it works for you. And that you can see exactly, like, it, even if, you know, on future playthroughs, you know, if you knew what was going on, if you see, like, Pius, and if he said that in a scene, like, obviously he hasn't, but if you hear him casting something, it's like, Chaturga, you know, Andrew, blah, blah. I just said Andromor. That's not a thing. You know, Magramor, Androbok. I was trying to say. If, then you know exactly what spell he's casting. So it's just outright. Oh, Sorry, I'm just so excited about how the spells work in this game that I forgot what I was doing. Get out of here, Sigil. Alright. Ah. Uh, guys, a little help. <laughs> uh, I I really like that one. That one has freaked me out on occasion. Not because it's you know falling through the floor is particularly scary, um, but oh 
Oh yeah, also, that's how strong this is, then. Oh yeah, oh, actually. Uh, two things of note. A, that if we have the ram down, we can just chop these guys in half. So like, have fun regenerating with that. But, because our blade is enchanted blue, and these are red guys, blue is strong against red. Which means that, you know, if we find more red zombies, we are going to kick their ass. For those of you who have not played the game and ever plan to play in the future, this is a very, very important ladder. Um, if you get to here, along the length of the cord of his ceiling is given way and collapse, learning the floor. Should I climb over it? No. You really, really want to go up here first. You know what? I want to have... Bring me... I want a sanity refill, please. Fine with getting sanity effects, but I don't need to hear uh, 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 the whole time. I just I don't need that in my life. Hey, we're getting bugs crawling across the screen now. Well, I mean we have no sanity, so that should be expected. Oh, uh, that's funny. Kind of unfortunate that it happened here. I think it'd be a lot creepier in the, the temple itself, but. Hello. We have enough sanity now, I don't need to finish him off. Let's, uh, just deal with these guys. Can't. There we go. Targeting him? Yes, but he was involved. Fine. Nope. Alright, so here's a room Pius never got to, which is good. The reason you come up here is for this. A ruby effigy stands upon the pedestal centered in the room. We are gonna pick that up. Okay, well what's that? Check, a small statuette of a defeated warrior kneeling in respect to an unseen victory it is made from a deep red ruby. We are not going to use that at all as Kareem, ever. It's very important, though. It, it's completely missable. You don't, like, you, you don't need it to beat the game, but it is arguably, you know, you know I've, I've talked about how in other things, I want to tell you before I go through this the stuff at the end, because that's the point of no return, duh. You know, when I was talking about the side quests, like, oh, if you save the guy is Elia, you know, he'll fix your melee weapon, so you don't just have the blowgun. You know, if you save the uh, the monk is Anthony, he gives you the hand-and-a-half bastard sword. Kareem doesn't have a, a save anybody, but, you know, he's here in this, you know, temple full of zombies. There's no people to save, but he did have a side quest, and his side quest was finding an effigy. Uh... And those, you know, they do not, and unlike, say, the other ones, they don't help in his chapter, but they will be helpful later. And along the length of the corridor, the ceiling is given away, collapse, should I climb over here? And I'd say, arguably, uh, the effigy stuff is more important than, you know, like, Elia fixing her, uh, you know, fixing her melee weapon. Wow, it's dark, I can't see anything. Well, I don't like the sound of that. Oh, I don't like the sound. Well... We've got a big sword. We have something strong against red. With the power of Ulia, I smite thee. Yeah, now we can... Ow. Why am I not hitting, though? Why am I not? Like, I miss it. Like, I got two of his heads on the first swing, and now I can't hit him to save my life. Quite literally. Uh, what's our sanity? Eh, I don't need to finish him off. To be fair, I'm also not sure how much more of the level there is.
Well, doesn't that look familiar? A blasphemous sculpture made from human skin and bone. A trestle of bones is cradled within this shrine, like a nightmarish book stand beckoning to be used. The way forward is blocked by a wrought iron portcullis. There appears to be no visible lock, but there has to be a way of opening it. Well, you know... What was this book doing for us anyways, besides teaching us magic and all that fun stuff? Nah, just kidding. We keep it. We're not just giving up the Tome of Eternal Darkness. Hey, good. Tome's gone. The end. Hi, guys. Oh, we got like a little boss rush here. Okay. Uh, let's keep our sanity a little up. I don't want to. No. Ow. Look, I can't get through the force field, but I'm not trying to kill that guy. I want this guy. Thank you. Let's back up so we can finish them. Boop. Boop. Okay. <laughs> oh, and then that guy's like, Ah, oh, Mantarok zombie, get him! Get him, boys! Now, obviously, blue is not strong against blue zombies, but, you know, it's, it's not weak. It just it is. No, man, you can't just bite someone when they're killing your friend. Oh, that's to show off, say, why the, the thing I was showing about how moving makes your magic... Oh, there was a bone thief! Okay, I... Yeah, yeah, here we go. Here's why it makes a difference about, like, you can't move when you're casting. Sure, when you're just doing a little puzzle and standing around, it doesn't matter. But when you're being chased by a bunch of dudes, you have no sanity. You've got a bone thief coming after. Which, for some reason, I can't target. There we go. I'll get some sleep. Huh, I'm just not hitting that guy. Oh, I think I'm about to die here. Alright, we have enough sanity to keep going for now. Yeah, I don't have anything strong against the blue horror. Okay, let's top up. Oh, he's stuck. Oh, he's stuck behind the other guy. Yes, I will take that. Oh, unfortunately, I can't target him because the other dude's in the way. Oh, there we go. Shock him to the face. Shock him to the face. Not working super well. Oh, wow. It was, it was doing damage. Oh, no, I just... I beheaded all three heads with one swing of this. I'll take that. Whew. Things got a little spicy there. And now with that power, Chaturga's artifact is here. And you're like, wait, that doesn't seem like a good idea, does it? I went the wrong one. Oh, I see how. Whoa. Weird. I'm trying to think, like, what the way Pius entered this. He like, came down an elevator, but... No, and then he went through the door, which was right here. Yeah. Weird magic afoot. Anyway. I'm sure this will be a great idea. A strange sculpture resembling a red clawed worm mysteriously floats above the pedestal. Should Kareem claim the artifact? I don't see why not. I mean, the fact that you already saw what happened when Pius grabbed the other one... Maybe should say something, but... Kareem, we will be together forever. Chandra? What... what happened to you? 
Things change, my dear Kareem. But even though my body is ravaged, I await you. Who did this to you? You were gone so long. I... I gave myself to a nobleman with a jealous mistress. She had me dragged from my bed, and in cruel revenge, flensed with knives. As the last blades were drawn across my body, and my blood cooled upon the floor, she cursed that I would only be with another in death. So much for thinking only of me. I should never have left. I have seen my folly, and have already paid dearly. I see so much more now, in death. I know the true value of the artifact which I asked you to find, and it is not for us to possess. If we are to be together again, you must make a sacrifice. Only when that is complete will we be together. Sacrifice? Why should I do anything for you? You lied to me, betrayed me, and you really don't look so good anymore. You must forget the past. Despite who you are now, you will also become something more, just as I have. But the sacrifice must be made. We must remain here and guard the artifact. Dark things will come to claim it, and you must be strong to keep it from them. Without your sacrifice, the world will fall into eternal darkness. The things I do for love. I mean, it's better end than Anthony's was. Like, yeah, Kareem ends up dying too, but. What was that weird cutscene about? Eh, nothing. Don't worry about it. Oh, our camera is tilted. Eh, okay. Not that bad, though. So, yeah, it's, yeah, as I was saying, it's it's not the worst ending that, I mean, like, Elia got blasted by Pius's magic. Anthony got, you know, turned into a zombie and fell at the feet of a, you know, dead Charlemagne. So, like, yeah, Kareem died, but... I mean, he, he got to go out kissing his love question. You know, who knows what he was thinking that part, which is like, oh, by the way, I didn't wait for you, but, uh, but you know, there's, th there's more important things than that right now. Yeah. There's our cathedral. And there's our temple. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that's... Oh, that's the desert, by the way. Well, so is this, but... So it'll be interesting to see if, if Cambodia is the next place. But now we have to go and, and get something as Alex. So what did we learn? Well, we actually got a couple things. Learn how to heal. That's probably not going to do too much unless Alex starts taking a beating. But we also got the Ulioth rune. And there are at least two things I can think of off the top of my head. Or we can use that, so let's take a look. I'm just gonna walk slowly, because I'm afraid. Don't mind me, I'm a scaredy cat. What were you looking at? What were you looking at? Do I want to even know? It's just bleeding. I'm gonna just assume the book bookcase is bleeding and that's it, which is not... You know you've got some mental problems when you're like, oh, it's just the bookcase bleeding, that's all. Got a phone call. Hello? Remember me, Alex. This isn't really happening. Yes, Grandfather, I remember you. You just visited me while I was reading my book. Thank you. Let's chant this. Magamore. Off, and we can finally use this now. It's taken us four chapters to get there, but we can open this pantry door. Eh, little rat scooted out. Cute. 
Mm, among the pantry contents is a spice jar with a scrap of paper hidden inside. I'll take that. Kitchen is as empty as the library is full, a reflection of her grandfather's attitude, always learning, reading, studying, rather than eating. Hey, it's all right, man. All right. Firmly sealed glass spice jar. The faint aroma of Arabian spices is tantalizingly emanating from it. There's a piece of paper inside. Well, what's it say? The Lurking Horror. My liege, the future is yours. The light in the Age of Darkness has been extinguished. The pillar of flesh has been constructed. The master of chaos, the keeper of the ancients, is long dead. The planets will be in alignment soon. All is prepared for your arrival. I will begin the final incantation that will bring you into our world within days. The next millennium will truly usher in a new age. Your guardians! Now, prepare the gate! After the chapter page is removed, the spice jar is no longer needed. Alex discards it. Well, okay, I kind of wish I'd checked the, the dresser drawer first, since we got a little cutscene. But, oh, it wasn't that much of a cutscene. Could go in here. Oh, that's right, that's this place. Is the other door we can't get down yet. Let's go up here. Find ourselves a dresser drawer. Are you gonna... Stop. Yeah, I have an idea. Let's never go in this room again. I'm gonna go right here. Oh, I... In this place is small... So we have Ulioth, but... Doesn't help much. Oh, it's interesting also that, like, Chaturga growls as if it's, like, Chaturga himself, but with Ulioth enchanting the weapon, it's more like lightning. Yeah, compared to, uh... Yeah, Chaturga growls with the weapon. Ulioth is like a lightning strike. Huh, cool. I guess it makes sense since Ulioth's voice isn't, you know, as I said, you know, Chaturga has the, the low demonic blah blah blah, I'm Chaturga, and Zelatoth has the creepy like, oh, I'm so insane, <laughs> type of thing. Whereas Ulioth is just like, you know, kind of a jackass. I mean, still an evil jackass that wants to, you know, kill everyone, but just doesn't sound as intimidating. So that makes sense then for a lightning thing. All right, well, that'll do it for today. Uh, you know, thank you for everybody who came by, said hello on stream. Thanks for everybody who watches us in the future. Special thanks today. You know, they're going to go to Kareem because, yeah, you know, he's just like, yes, the love of his life sent him on his quest. And then she you wasn't faithful to him anyways. But in the end, he's still like, you know what? Okay, I still kind of like you. And I guess guarding the world from eternal darkness is worth it. So, you know, he put aside the fact that, like, he was a little miffed about the whole situation and stepped up. Good job, Kareen. So I just looked up and I saw a thing. I'm like, I'm wearing a black shirt. No, I'm wearing a green shirt in front of my green screen. I guess that's what I get for not using my camera for most of the stuff. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm just see-through. That's all. woo -hoo. All right, join me next time when we read about the lurking horror. Should Kareem claim the artifact? I don't see why not. I mean, the fact that you already saw what happened when Pius grabbed the other one maybe should say something, but...